So our next mission will be creating the terrain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a geometry node. And we're going to call this terrain. We're going to jump inside. I'm going to unlock the camera so we can just move around in the uh, perspective view. And we're going to be using Houdini's new height field SOPs. So let's drop that down. And you can see that the size is set to 1000 by 1000 meters. So I ended up changing this to around 5000 by 5000 meters to make this a nice large surface. And I set the initial grid spacing to six. So I'm just gonna show you what that does. We're gonna take a convert SOP and we're gonna convert this geometry, uh, convert the height field to polygons, just like that. So you can see we have polygons there and I'm just, just gonna show you the effect of the grid spacing. So I'm gonna turn the grid spacing up to something like 25. So you can see that as I increase the grid spacing, the plane is becoming uh, lower resolution. So let's leave that around six, that's fine. I'll delete the convert. We're gonna drop down a height field, if I can spell it correctly, uh, height field noise. We're gonna plug the height field top into the left input. And we get something really cool looking like this. Just gonna to switch to headlight only, just so we can see it. We can also turn off the grid as well. You can mess around with the amplitude and the element size. I went with 175 by 500. All the other settings I left as is. I'm going to copy my render camera over, the one that I used. Just going to copy that, place it in the scene, drop this into the viewport here. You can also select it via this option, so render cam still. So let's say that we want to sort of make a peak at this sort of level. How do we do that? Well, one way we could sort of offset this, try and get it into place. And another way is quite nice and art directable. We can tell that, take another height field noise. So I'll drop it down, plug this into the left input like that. Let's view. I'm going to increase the element size actually let's just really turn that right up turn the max octaves down to something like four let's increase the amplitude to a fair amount might even drop the octaves down to two something like that i think and what we want to do is we want to add this noise that we've done here to this noise but we only want to add it in a certain areas. So the way we do that is by creating height field paint sop. And what this allows us to do is just paint in areas. So we can just paint this in sort of around here. And it's giving us a nice visualization there. So we could paint it in there. And then on the second input, this says a mask. So where we're painting in red, that's our mask. So we can plug this into the right input and view it. And what I usually do is I just mess around with these settings until I get something that I that I want. So we can turn that down, turn the scale down, and you can see you can just keep sliding around with this, messing around, see what kind of settings you get.
can even have a play around with the noise type. That'll give you nice, different looking results. Turn the amplitude down. Offset it. See there, that's looking pretty cool. So let's go back from there to there. That's looking kind of nice. I'm just going to uh, paste over the ones that I did. So let's get rid of those. And this really does depend on each artist, what you're trying to achieve in the shot. So you can see here, we've got the extra noise added. We're painting a mask. I'm plugging that into another noise, painting another mask. I'm just sort of doing this in different areas. So the end result was something that looked like this, which looks kind of cool. So we've created a really cool looking terrain. It's really basic, which is nice. And it took a couple of minutes to set up, which is great. Let's hit W on the keyboard to go into wireframe and you'll notice that we don't have any polygons. So what we need to do is we need to convert the height field to polygons. And we do that using a convert op. So now you see that we have polygons. So going from here to here. And just make sure you've got convert to polygon set. Let's apply a UV quick shade node. Hit W on the keyboard again. And this is showing our current UVs. Let's drop down a UV texture sop. And we're just going to scale those UVs up. And I'm going to do this on middle mouse click on scale. And we're just going to lift that up. And I ended up going with 30. And just make sure when you're rendering the terrain that you have the UV texture selected, not the UV quick shade, as this will block materials being applied. Let's set up a, a basic shader for this terrain. Shift this into place and I'll drop down a material network. Copy that, paste it. Underscore materials. Create a network box. Keep it nice and organized. Jump in, we'll drop down an RS material. This would be called, I don't know, mud. We're gonna use a, uh, a sand texture, but anything that sort of resembles mud is fine. GGX shading. Let's drop down an RS texture to import our diffuse and our normal map. Plug it in. We'll plug the RS material into a redshift material. Call this one mud out. Now we'll drop this material onto the terrain. It's got a redshift, open the render view. We'll also view via the uh, Render cam still. I'm going to turn down these render settings as I copied it from another scene. I'm just going to divide those numbers by two. If you left click on resolution, that will give you the output. 
left click again to change it. And if you need to, you can delete the channels. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. And it's all just about giving uh, some extra detail at the bottom. So if we do th see through any of those trees, then we're gonna be getting a little bit of interesting uh, color variation there. Let's jump back in. I think we could mess around with the roughness. I'll just show you the effect of the normals. So they're doing a fair amount there. Let's drop down an RS noise. And as usual, we'll plug this into a redshift material to test that noise out. Like so. And we're working on a very large surface here. So let's just scale that right down. That's some really low number here to get what we're looking for. So I think something around that should be absolutely fine. Let's plug that into the reflection roughness. Drag that back on top. Gives us this, which is looking kind of cool. Let's drop down an RS change range to remap those values. And we'll say, well, the shiniest we want the surface getting is probably around 0.2 and the roughest point one uh, and the roughest is one we could probably even go up to something like 0.28 or something like that i think that's looking fine we could also darken down this texture so you take an rs color correct and we could just decrease that level scale something like that. 